Hello, my name is Caitlin, and if you're new here, I generally, or used to, make videos on computer building and just to run mods and all kinds of fun things with computers and hardware. However, this channel is kind of uh, who knows what anymore, and I am now sharing my experience with taking the Security Plus certification at the beginning of this year. I'm going to try to make this video as short and sweet as possible, however, I can go off on rants and tangents and talk weird and get really annoyed at myself real fast. So if you don't like that and you don't want to see this actual video, Video, I did actually write a blog post mirroring this video that you can click in the description below. Uh, it just takes you to my website where it's all written out there and so you can get the same amount of information. But if you want to watch this video, then let's continue. So I'm going to go over a couple of things. First, uh, my experience, the amount of time I studied, the tools that I used, the test experience that I had, my score. Um, and I think that's probably it. If you have any other questions, then just leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. If I don't answer, you can always reach out to me on Twitter or Instagram. My links are in the description below. So first, my experience in IT. I have been working in corporate IT for five years since 2014, at the beginning of 2014, so five years. I Before corporate IT, I did work for a Geek Squad and Apple, which is the two main reasons why I have a lot of experience with computer building, troubleshooting, both Apple and Microsoft computers. Um, I have also been a computer builder since 2005, when in college I built my first gaming computers. So uh, a lot of experience on the physical front, uh, in IT, five years. I started out in IT as an application specialist and trainer, which essentially meant taking like level two tickets in a remote office with about 200 users. And I was also the trainer. That's what I started out doing. I did that for about a year and a half before I was promoted to an application specialist and developer. However, there was very little developing. It's more like a systems administrator. And I did that for about two and a half years. Mostly worked with SCCM and just spent the past few years administrating that. So that was my main focus and kind of the main focus of the past few years. It definitely taught me a lot of things about Microsoft and um, just kind of like how the environment and infrastructure all works together. So I did have that sort of background. However, I had never specifically worked in security and there were a lot of things regarding security that I wasn't familiar with. In November last year, I did transition to our security team. I applied for a position uh, on our security team, it's called information specialist, no, information security threat specialist. So essentially like a threat hunter where I kind of track our logs and manage uh, vulnerabilities and threats in the environment and just make sure everything is nice and secure. However, upon getting the position, I was the only, or yeah, I was the only team member without a certification the other team members all have a lot of certifications so I felt like there was a deficiency there and also a deficiency in just my experience in security. So I did take it upon myself, this was not paid for by my firm or to I wasn't told to go get the certification, I kind of just took it upon myself to know that this was something I needed to do. So at the beginning of January, kind of like maybe December 31st, I started studying for the Security Plus certification from CompTIA. I studied for two weeks, uh, roughly, a little bit less. I took the test on January 12th and I passed. I don't wanna say that I went in with zero experience because obviously I do have that background in IT and just computers in general and can kind of pick up the technology and terminology pretty quickly. However, most of it was stuff that I wasn't really, really familiar with from a technical standpoint. So for studying for Security Plus, it was totally different in that things kind of made more sense. And the reason for things uh, brought it all together and I really actually enjoyed understanding why things were the way they were, why, you know, VLANs are set up the way they are in our environment and just all the different layering of security. It all just made more sense and I I really, really wish that I had taken this test too earlier. So I actually really enjoyed the process of studying, which is kind of weird to say because it was also really painful. I literally did not do anything else except study. That's not true. I mostly, like maybe 80% of the time, I studied. I told myself that I wasn't going to read any books. I'm a really big uh, avid book reader, so 
not letting myself read any books for the beginning of the year was really difficult, but it forced me to study because it was like I have to pass this so that I can go back and read books again. So I think that was kind of a, a big motivator for me. If you need a good motivation, I recommend doing something like that, like cutting something out of your life and filling it with studying that will motivate you to study more, to get it done faster so you can get back to doing what you love. As far as the amount of time each day, I mean, I work not really a 95, but kind of like a 95. And so each day I would try to study a couple hours after work. Um, and then on weekends, I would pretty much spend maybe like 10 to about 10 hours or so, maybe eight to 10 hours studying on the weekends. So, but that was only like two weekends. Now to discuss the tools that I used, I used the bunch and I do recommend diversifying your resources because the way one author will put something is sometimes very different the way another one will. So one way may stick in your brain a lot faster and easier than the way other people present things. So that was one of the best things that I learned in this process. I started out watching Professor Messer videos on YouTube, which are a really great free resource if you just want to start out watching videos. And I feel like they lay a good foundation. However, for me, I don't really learn very well through visual. My brain just kind of goes off on its own way too easily with video. And so I find I study better through reading and um, like written study. So Messer videos, I think I made it all the way through but it was really like passive watching. However, they're really great if you like videos. After watching the videos, I did purchase his study material. I think it was $20. It's just a printout of all of his slides that he uses in the videos. I started out writing uh, what he was posting on the screens and then I realized that you could just purchase them for $20. So I just ended up doing that so that I wasn't having to write in a notebook that I would never go back and look through anyway. This is the CompTIA Security Plus Get Certified, Get Ahead. This is the SYO 401 study guide. However, I didn't use this one specifically. I bought this last year and then I never ended up taking the 401. So this year I had to take the 501 because the 401's expired now. And I bought the updated version of this for 501 on Kindle and I ended up really, really liking using the Kindle version and said, this book is heavy and it's annoying to carry around. So instead of like carrying a book from room to room, I was able to just have the Kindle app on my laptop or on my phone or iPad or whatever and just be able to pull up the book anywhere I was with a digital resource and be able to look at my notes or my highlights from the book or use the practice test. I found that way more very, very valuable and will probably purchase more digital books going forward now that I know the value of them over a physical copy that's heavy and bulky and annoying to carry around. So I did find that, that the book written by Daryl Gibson was fantastic and I do feel like it was probably my number one resource for studying for the test. Uh, I went through each chapter and made flashcards for all of like the acronyms, the ports, some of the big security concepts I put on flashcards and I literally had a stack. In fact, I'll probably grab it. I had a stack of flashcards about this haul that would take me at least an hour to go through once I had them all finished. The flashcards are not for everyone, but they worked really well for me, just kind of reviewing and looking over them before bed or in the morning, things of that sort. It was really handy having them on flashcards, so I did find value in that. The book also has really great practice tests. There's one in the beginning and then one at the very end, and I really liked those questions. I found that those questions mimicked the test better than any of the other practice tests or questions that I found online. Um, I don't know if Daryl Gibson is just really good at writing test questions or what, but uh, he definitely hit the nail on the head with the questions. They were just, I mean, they're not identical, of course, but the concepts are very similar and the writing of CompTIA questions can be a little tricky. So I think that was the biggest help in uh, going forward with the test. So that was the book. And then of course the practice questions were all fantastic. And then I also used Udemy, Udemy, I think I'm saying that right, I think UD, is it UDME, I don't know, Udemy's website has a really, really great uh, video set, I think I paid $20 for it, I can't remember now, 
It was about that. Uh, Mike Myers has a really great video series on Security Plus 501 series. Um, I kind of wish I had purchased that or started watching it first because I don't know, I just really enjoyed, he's a little bit more animated and does some kind of like show and tell of how things work and, and uses props and I just really enjoyed watching his videos. And so it just kind of depends on how you learn better. So for me, I felt like that was a little bit more engaging in the videos and so I really did like them. I watched all of his cryptography videos because like I said, that is the harder subject uh, of the test if, you, if you're not familiar with cryptography, which I wasn't. Then, uh, so I did watch those videos and they were fantastic. So if you're having struggle with cryptography, I highly recommend that resource. Uh, I don't know if it came in conjunction or if I bought them separately, but Udemy also has a set of three practice tests, like full length tests for Security Plus. I got those as well and I took those periodically, like um, I would say probably after like five days of study and then maybe like uh, a week of study and then one right before the test. So there were three and I took all of them. They did cover some material that I didn't find in Daryl Gibson or Professor Messer's material. So I thought that was kind of good in that, kind of like filled in some gaps. However, I don't know if that material was actually on the test. I felt like Daryl Gibson's material was the most accurate for the test. Uh, but I still found value in the Udemy practice tests. I thought they were still just like a good way to test yourself, to just sit down for a full 90 minutes and take the test and see your score. And of course, if you're doing well, then you're probably ready for the test. I actually didn't score too well on the practice tests at first until probably the end, and which was good because I already had the test scheduled and I was gonna take it no matter what because to me, I was more anxious about the actual test than the material, if that makes sense. Because I had never taken a certification, I haven't taken a test in a really long time, so I just wasn't sure how that was gonna go, so that was the, the scariest part for me. The final tool, and probably one of the most important, if not the most important thing that I did, was I printed out the objectives for the Security Plus 501 test, and I carried them with me uh, wherever I was studying. And I kind of referred to them because I wanted to stay on track and make sure that I knew all of the objectives before going into the test, of course. The objectives, like the printed version, also have acronyms that you're supposed to know, ports that uh, you should be familiar with. What else? There was something else. But anyway, it was really just a good resource and I kind of kept notes on things that I was a little unsure of or wanted to make sure I remembered. That should be your first thing that you do. Print out the objectives and just keep them with you and refer to them periodically through your study process. Just kind of like, if you know everything, you just tick those off and you're good to go. And then if you come across something that you're not too familiar with, you spend extra time there. I think that's all the resources that I used. So now I will discuss the actual test day and uh, the test experience. So like I said, I had never taken a certification, so I was super nervous. I scheduled the test at a National Polytechnic Institute, I think that's what it is, uh, in my area. I live in Los Angeles, so there, there were a lot of options for testing locations and that one just ended up being closest to me. So I went there. It, it looked like there was a lot of um, medical machinery in there, so they definitely do, and a lot of people in scrubs, so they do other testing as well. I got there about 30 minutes early. I do recommend getting there early, especially if you live in a city like LA where traffic can be kind of hit or miss. I got there about 30 minutes early and just sat in my car for about 20 minutes. 10 minutes before the test was supposed to start, I went in, filled out my paperwork, uh, they took my driver's license and passport as identification, and then I got my driver's license back, they kept my passport and my car keys, I left my phone in the car, uh, they took me into a room, it was like a classroom with a closed door, they took me into a room with a bunch of computers, it was like a computer lab. There were probably about 30 computers and probably about 20 people in there. It was really busy in there and really loud and really warm. Like it was kind of like, I don't know, it was kind of gross, honestly. It's like just like stale, warm computer air in this room with a closed door and no windows. Anyway, not the best testing experience, I guess, but I think they're all like that because I've talked to other people and they all say the same thing. So you sit down on a computer, they kind of like set you up, you have, I had at least, I don't know if all of them are like this, but I had three sheets of laminated paper and a sharpie and that's it. You kind of just log in, start the test. It was really loud in the testing center. I didn't think 
about this beforehand. Thank goodness though they provide earplugs for you because it was really loud. I guess there are tests that require a lot of typing and there were people literally writing essays in there and all you hear is the keyboard clacking. And when I first sat down, I started to panic because that's all I could hear. And I didn't want to put the earplugs in for some reason. I don't know, I was being weird. And so I started the test and I was like, no, I need the earplugs. So I put the earplugs in and it definitely helps. Anyway, so the test starts with the performance-based questions. If you're not familiar with the performance-based questions, I recommend looking at Daryl Gibson's website. He has some on his website that are really, really helpful. They're not, of course, the exact questions that you're going to get, but they were very, very similar and just very helpful. I didn't even read the performance-based questions. I just skipped right to right through them. I flagged them so yeah, I can come back to them later and went to the multiple choice questions. The multiple choice questions for me immediately were really tricky. I looked at them and I was like, I don't know any of these. And I started to panic and I got really nervous and I was like, I'm gonna fail. This is over. I studied for two weeks straight and I'm gonna fail. And so I, I obviously just stuck with it. It's a 90 minute test and you have 90 questions. And uh, I mean, I just went through it. And so halfway through, I was still thinking I was failing, but it started to get easier. I don't know if I like my panic was subsiding or I was just kind of like getting in the groove and like things were coming back to me. But I finished all the questions probably with I don't know, 30 minutes, no, maybe like 20 minutes to spare. And then I went back to the performance-based questions. They ended up being really easy, so I probably didn't need to skip them, but regardless, I'm glad that I did. So they were pretty easy. And then I went through any of the multiple choice questions that I had flagged and reviewed them and just kind of <sighs> freaked out internally because I still thought I was failing. I thought I was like really close though. Like, you know, when you're like on the edge and you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm ever thinking this or if I'm gonna change everything that I had right because I'm second guessing myself. Anyway, I ended up looking over those questions so about like 10 seconds left before you have to submit the test and I just submitted it and immediately they give you a survey. They don't even tell you your score. They just give you a survey and they ask questions like what was your study prep like, what's your experience, your gender, things of that sort. And so you fill out that survey and then they give you your score and I got a 797 out of 900 passing the 750 so thank goodness. I squeaked by. I don't want to say like barely because people pass with a 757. I was passing. So I got a 797. Very close to 800. I was kind of hoping for over 800 but I don't care. I passed. So that number popped up on the screen and I literally stared at it for 60 seconds at least. It might have actually been longer but I was just so... I was so overwhelmed at that moment and I really thought that I was going to fail that I, I literally think everything, in, I'm going to fail everything in my life. So this is not like shocking to me or pretty much anyone that knows me. And then I got up and went to the receptionist to get my passport and my car keys and she printed out a paper which said, I passed, yay. And that was it. And I sat in my car and texted everyone I know, including all my managers, that I passed because Really none of them knew that I was even taking it. I didn't want to tell them I was studying for it and then have sh like struggle to take it or something or have to take it a couple of times. So I didn't tell them until I passed. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That wraps up my experience. It was, I'm glad to get it out of the way. I'm glad I have one done. Now on to the next one. I hope you found this video valuable. I definitely did a lot of research in how other people studied before taking this certification so hopefully my experience can have some value for your experience and I wish you the best of luck this is a wonderful certification and I really do recommend it for anyone in IT to take it just because it fills in some gaps I'm sure like a plus and network plus are both really good starter certifications as well I would take network plus next however I'm actually gonna jump all the way to CCNA routing and switching and take that one next because my networking is not so good so that's gonna be the next certification that I study for I will not not going to take A plus because I have a lot of hardware experience and I don't need an A plus certification to tell me that. But if you're new to IT or if you want that extra boost by studying and just kind of like forcing yourself to learn the material, then I do recommend them. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Bye bye.